day. This is Prophet Queen. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, joining us for the first time. I'd like to welcome you. This prophet has loved you so much. Look at this. I've got this, you know, so that you can be able to hear me when I speak. I'm just trying this for the first time and I'm trying it with you, honey. I'm so excited. I don't know if this is how they put it up. Amen. I'm not trying to show off any cleavage. But I'm trying to show you <laughs> this uh, mic. Hallelujah. I believe it's going to make my voice better. Amen. And nevertheless, it was to say that I wanted to speak about a wonderful topic. Did I tell you who I am? Amen. Because that is very, very important. How can we miss that part? This is the prophet of the Lord. I'm guided by the Holy Spirit. I take the word of God as it is. Amen. I do not add or subtract from Genesis to Revelation. I take it as it is. If you happen to hear anything new, just know that it's a revelation that comes from up above. I want to talk about the call of God upon your life. The Bible says many are called, but few are chosen. Amen. But one thing that I want to focus on is to say that when God calls you, it's not going to be easy. Amen. I have never seen anybody that was called by God saying that, oh God, this is so wonderful. I can't believe that you're calling me for ministry. Amen. There are different type of things that God is calling us for. Amen. We know that we've got prophets. We know that we've got pastors. We've got different type of people that are doing different type of things. You know, the call of God is not like when you go to work, they call you and say that, Jacobeth, we want to promote you today before they can even finish your clapping your hands. Oh my God, I just want to thank the Lord for this promotion. Even if you don't understand uh, uh, the, the, the position that they're giving you, amen, you are so excited. You even run before they even finish telling you about your promotion. Now you're calling your uncle, you're calling your sister, you're calling your neighbor. Next thing we see you testifying in the church, you know what? But when it comes to the call of God, it's not easy, amen. And what do I say that the call of God is not easy? Can we quickly uh, go to the book of Exodus? You know, I'm not going to open my Bible. I'm a walking and talking Bible. Amen. I'm an expert when it comes to this area. But when you are not sure, amen, there is a man called Moses. You know, when God appeared to him, you know, and called him to say that Moses, Moses, amen. Moses was not sure of himself. Amen. It was not easy, you know, the conversation that he had with God when God was calling him. One thing that I want to tell you, when God calls you, he gives you a message. He gives you a mandate on what you are supposed to do. Amen. This is what makes it to be difficult. Hallelujah. Why? Because we can be pastors, but God is not calling us one in the same area. You might find that I'm looking at a pastor that is prospering. He's in a suburb. You know, but God is calling me for a village. Here God is specific to speak to Moses to say that, Moses, I am calling you to go and take out the children of the Israelites into a promised land. Amen. The land of Canaan. Amen. We remember in the Genesis when God was speaking to Abraham the first time when, when, when he spoke to Abraham and called him. Hallelujah. It was not easy. Even for Abraham, our ancestor, when he was calling him to say that, come out of the country, come out from your family. Now, you, the only family that you have ever known, it's your father, it's your mother, it's your relative. The only language that you have ever known is the language where you were speaking to your parents. But God is calling you to an area in a place place where you have never been before. This is what happened to Abraham. When Abraham arrived in the land of Canaan, we know that he has made a sacrifice there. That is when God spoke to him that this is the land that I'm going to give to your children. I don't want to call Joseph a sold out to say that he took us to Egypt where we became slaves for a particular time, you know. Now we have to be taken back to the land again, you know. Because when you're reading the book of Genesis, there was famine, but uh, Joseph went there because the brothers sold him to Egypt, you know, just for you to understand something about our generation, because this is important for where we are going. The first time we see a person being called, Adam was not called, he was placed in the garden. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> he was chosen and put in the garden. But I want to speak specifically where I saw God in Genesis chapter 12. When you read it, it says that the call of Abraham, when God called Abraham, amen. 
And you say, what is the calling? You know, now I don't understand this thing of calling. It's when God has given you a mandate. You know, when God speaks to Abraham, he says that I want you to move out of your country. I'm going to bless whoever that is going to bless you. I'm going to curse whoever that is going to curse you. There is a new generation. You know, Abraham was carrying a generation. You remember that time when he met with Melchizedek for the first time, you know, when, he, when we spoke of tithe. When we spoke of him taking the tenth of what he has received. After when Lord, you remember those four kings when he was going to save Lord. Then he came up with some loot. Then he was met with um, uh, uh, the prophet there. The Bible says he was carrying a nation. He was carrying the Levites when you read the book of. Um, it says that uh, uh, Abraham gave tithe to the one that lives. But when it comes to Melchizedek, he gave tithe to the one that is up above. Amen. It is speaking of Christ. Christ is the greatest priest. Amen. He has been created. He's the greatest priest. You know Christ was God here on earth. I'm not going to speak much about that. You say, it was Christ called. No, he was sent. It's the same as, 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 as Adam. He was just put in the garden. <laughs> Amen. He was put in the garden. He was the first man. Amen. Uh, to be created. Amen. But we saw no had to come in. But nevertheless, let me come back to this one, not confuse you. You know, when you become an expert, now you're overflowing. There's so much to teach. But let me focus on one topic so that I don't confuse you because we're speaking of the call of God. That is not easy. So it says that what I wanted to show you about Melchizedek and Abraham, you know, when you speak of the Levites, it says that the Levites were in Abraham. We are Abraham's descendant. We were in Abraham. Amen. You know, you remember when we sing that song to say that Abraham's blessings are mine. Amen. So nevertheless, it was just to come back to say that the call of God is not easy. Why? Because the things that God is going to tell you is going to blow your mind. I have never seen anybody God speaking to them, telling them that like, 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 like Moses, when God says to him, I, I want you to take out the Israelites. Amen. He knows he has grew up, he grew up in the house of Pharaoh. He knows the type of man Pharaoh is. Amen. And then you remember he was just running away. I can call it self-defense. I can call it self-defense. Amen. <laughs> he did some stuff, you know, it was not perfect. One thing I want to say, when God calls, he's not looking for a perfect man. He's looking for a man that he has created because the Bible says we have been created according to the purpose of God. He's looking for a man and woman that he has called. Even if uh, people can be calling you names, different type of names to say, Medara, I believe there were people who were still talking about Moses that is a Medara. He killed somebody. You know how people are. People like to Stay in the past. Amen. Sometimes when God appeared to you, you can be like Rahab, where you are a prostitute, but God is calling you to save the Israelites by hiding those spies. Your calling is just to hide the spies. Amen. She had an eye for men. I believe there were people who saw those men, they could not welcome them in their home. But because she was a prostitute, she has dealt with different type of men. Even when the official came of that city, they said, we know there are men that came into your house. Why? Because she specializes in different type of men. And they knew if they are men and we can't find the men in this city, the only person that can have those men is that woman. And they knew what she's capable of. But when it comes to this holy man, she was not doing those type of things. You know, she was telling them that we know who you are. We know we have had people are afraid of you. You know, she even, you know, helped them to escape, you know, even though she was putting them there on the roof, but she helped them to escape. Why? Because that's what she has been called to do. You know, we, all of us, we are not, we, yes, we are born evil, as the Bible says. But when God calls us, he's calling us for his divine mission. It's not going to be easy. One thing you want to know, what is it that God is calling me for? Am I called, am I an international speaker? Amen. For me, I've opened up this YouTube channel because I am an international speaker. I just don't speak to one person. You're listening to me. Where are you listening to me from? You might find that you're in Jamaica. You might find that you are in USA. You might find that you you in different type of the world. Why? Because my calling is not only a local. Amen. So you can you can be a local pastor. You can be a local minister. You have been called, but the calling of God upon your life is not gonna be easy. 
it's not gonna be easy but hang in there hallelujah some of you you want to give up and say i thought this thing was gonna be simple i'm gonna open a church and people are just gonna come into this ministry flocking in oh you're looking i love td jakes you're looking at td jakes that i i just gonna have crowd like that or craft like dollars and i'm just gonna have so many people like that only to find that you've got two people in your church but yet god has called you and the neighbors are questioning to say did God really call you? <laughs> I mean, there are times when people will question your calling. Amen. To say, did he really call you to sing Jokobeth? Because you've been selling this CD. Nobody is buying. Amen. Some of the songs that we are singing to today are songs that were sang years ago. There is a song that is trending right now to say, Zing, Zang. It's a Tsonga song. That song, that person produced that song so many years ago. It was not in fashion. It was not in style. But right now, people, you know, people even ask Ranka, and Rankan, are you sure you're called for this thing of singing? Amen. <laughs> because we see this song, I mean, your songs are, they were not trending. But right now, as I speak, it's everywhere. People are singing about that song. If you don't know, hey, just Google it, go to YouTube, go to TikTok. It's there. Zing, zang, something like that. And like, prophetess, why do you hear these songs? Are you praying or what? Hey, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> now nah, I go with the times. Amen. Jesus was invited to a wedding. He even followed the theme of the wedding. If it was purple, that were wearing purple, there's nothing new under the sun. What is happening now, it has happened before. Not trying to be defensive, but coming back to the topic. It's not going to be easy, men of God. It's not going to be easy, women of God, as you're watching me, to say that you will question your calling. <laughs> to say that, did God really call me with, with, with Moses? God spoke to him directly, you know. God spoke to him direct, but after that, Pharaoh's heart was not easy to let them go. But finally, we saw them in the promised land, even though, you know, God says that you're not going to see the promised land, you know, because of that, you know, the anger issues of Moses that made him not to enter into Canaan. But he saw it from a distance, you know, that was promised to him, you know. So what, what do I have to say to you? It's not going to be easy, but hang in there. You could be watching me and say, prophetess, I feel like giving up. I feel like I can't do this thing. I feel like this thing is not for me you have been called amen for the purpose of god amen trust him stay in his presence pray for god to reveal more keep on pushing if it is god that has called you for ministry keep on pushing if it is god that has called me for this youtube even if there's one person watching i get excited why because i'm doing what god has called me to do it could be that god is calling me i was listening to um i forgot her name you know you know, I'm human. Hallelujah. <laughs> but you are saying something very important. What if God is calling for the upcoming generation and you are busy, you are trying looking for viewers, you are trying looking for subscribers, only to find that God is calling you for, 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 for the children that are not yet born. Amen. Who are going to come and watch this video. That is going to be helpful to them. But here I am, I'm sitting, continuing this message. I'm no longer going to come anymore because you guys are not subscribing. Are you the one that has called me in the first place? You know, you find people uh, uh, talking to people in the church saying that, yeah, if you don't tithe, if you don't give in this church, I'm going to give up. Are they the one that have called you? No, the one that has called you, it's God. Amen. You focus on God. You come back to God for God to give you direction. Like Moses, you know, he came back to God and said, Pharaoh is not listening to us. Pharaoh is not letting us go. Pharaoh is it's being hard. The more I say this, the more Pharaoh put more pressure on the people to say, oh, okay, you guys have got time to play. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to reduce some of the things that were helping you to make scones. You know, I'm just giving an example for those who don't know that scripture to say that if you had milk, now you go, you'll have to go and make the cow yourself. <laughs> You know, that's how he was punishing them. You are trying to go to this uh, mountain. You want to worship the Lord because you've got enough time in your hands, you know, that is being wasted. So I'm going to give you more jobs. So people who are so heartbroken, they came back to Moses to say, you know, ever since you spoke about this promised land, these things are becoming hard on us. It was hard on Moses. So what do I have to say? People will criticize you. People will speak things, but how say don't pay attention to everything that people are saying. Even your wife, sometimes, you know, she will end up saying, Mara Papa, are you sure that God has called you? And you end up being confused. Now the kids, I remember when we first, we first started the ministry, it was not easy. They will send us letters from school because we're trying to pay for the plot. You know, we're trying to do different type of things. Our family members try to speak to us. We must stop this thing. It's making the kids to suffer. But we were listening more to God, not to what they were saying. Right now, they support 
support us, our family, you know, financially. They were supporting us. Right now, the ministry is growing. But in the beginning, it was not easy. You know, when the baby is born, you don't know what's going to happen, whether they're going to sit in six months, you know. That's why there are those books of developmental stages where they speak of development to say that when they're three-year-old, you can expect this. Those books are very, very helpful. If you're a mom, you've never read them, go buy them. Even in ministry, there are books that people have written. You know, I read books that are written by TDJ's books that are written by uh, Renate Bonke. Why? Because those people inspire me. You know, you want to know about the Holy Spirit. There is Catherine Cromer. You want to know about the Holy Spirit and deliverance. There are different type of people that are there in ministry that are inspiring us. Amen. So what do I have to say? You have to keep on coming back to the Lord and seeking his face like more he will come back to the Lord. I remember this other time when he was angry, you know, people crying, saying that we need water, we need water. And God gave him instructions because he was frustrated. Then he hit the rock. That cost him dearly to say that mm -mm, you're not going to enter that land with this attitude of yours. Amen. Why? Because he's human. Sometimes we're going to respond in a way that we're not supposed to respond. Why? Because the pressure is on us. Amen. We have got too ma so much pressure. Father, they're not even booking you, Joker Beth. <laughs> you know, when you first started singing, you felt like people are going to call you and, and started to listen to your music. Or oh, right now we are looking at Beyonce. I love Beyonce with all my heart. I love her so much. So you find that she's on tour and you have never done something like that but you're in the same field why because we are called but not for one and the same thing there are those that are called to sing but chosen for those type of things you know there are people who can sing 10 songs all fire but there are people who can sing 10 songs only one song is gonna hit our hearts and the song that we're gonna love and sing about but there are people who are gifted from one song to the end you love the whole cd if it's a cd you love the whole album Album. It is the album. So what do I say? It is not going to be easy. We are not called for one and the same thing. You have seen the family of Moses. There was Aaron. Aaron was called as a priest. Amen. Miriam was called as a worshiper, but the one that was chosen in that family, it was uh, um, uh, uh, Moses. He was called by God, but he was chosen in that family to lead the children of the Israel. And that's why the time when they left the ministry under the hands of Aaron, what did they do? We saw them dancing to a cow, you know, say, we want to thank God for the cow, for taking us out of Canaan. I mean, can really the cow take you out of Canaan after the Red Sea, after what God has done. But we understand he was not the one that was chosen it was not it was who it was Moses he could handle the pressure once God calls you he knows that you can handle the pressure that is coming women of God men of God sometimes people will just leave the church people will just leave you for no reason people will just not talk to you anymore sometimes things will just break apart but this it's gonna get better I've seen it with the Israelites you know they ended up going to the promised land and remember when I was speaking of rehab you know that's where the time when they were preparing to cross the the river Jordan going to the city it happened for them why because God was with them as long as God is with you and God has called you and you are sure 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 keep on doing what they're supposed to do I might have given example about ministry songs and so forth there are different type of things that God has called you to do Maybe it's to go out there and speak to kids in schools, you know. And maybe, I don't know what is it that God has called you to do. Maybe it's to feed the hunger. You have got the desire, so passionate, amen. You know, the moment you're trying to feed them, the more they begin to do bad things, the more they continue to stay in drugs while you're busy teaching them to come out of drugs. You are doing your own. Remember Jeremiah? Jeremiah will go speak to people, people do different things. Ezekiel spoke to people. God said to him straight, they're not going to listen to you. Then why are you calling me in the first place, God, if they're not going to listen to me? You remember when God told Ezekiel, he says that your wife is going to die tonight, but I don't want you to cry, you know. And then after when God has spoken to him to say, I don't want you to cry, now he comes out, people are shocked. Hey, your wife has died. Now you continue doing this. It's like, this is what God has told me to do. You do what God tells you to do because he has called you. But I wanted to assure you that it's not going to be better, but it's going to be, it's not going to be easy, but it's going to be better with time. Amen. You are going to testify. Amen. It, you know, this YouTube channel, it's going to blow up one day. It's going to blow up, you know. I'm looking nice with this white shirt. I, I, I chose the classic one so that we can come back to this video. And I'm still, um, you know, relevant with the times. Amen. <laughs> remember when God was speaking to Jeremiah, he says, how many years? 
how many years when we were speaking to Jennifer, speaking of the deliverance, amen. How many, how many years, how many years? Did he say seven years? How many years did God say of deliverance that is going to come, amen? When God spoke to Abraham, did he say 400 years? You know, I'm going to deliver those children of mine. But the ones that were there, they were not, they were not sure of what's really happening. Bo, Bo Moses, amen. They were not sure of the prophecy that was given. Amen. If somebody were to come and say 400 years is what God said. I remember, I know that the years were passing by. Maybe during the time of Moses it was no longer 400. Maybe it was 200 or 100. We are not sure. But I, I'm not an expert. <laughs> I speak through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I wanted to assure you that don't doubt god he has called you you are built for this amen you can do this hallelujah you can do this hallelujah we can do this hallelujah i believe i will see myself in great platforms amen i love stephanie ike i love uh, 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 Miss Fonge, I love different type of people in the world that are preaching the gospel. And when I look at them, I'm encouraged to say that, you know what, one of the good days, I'm also going to stand in one of those big platforms one day and speak the word of God, you know, and preach the word of God. It might sound like a dream. Somebody could be laughing. <laughs> That's too much. <laughs> Amen. If, God, if that is what God has called you to do, you will not fail. The Bible says, he who has started a good work in you, he will establish it. He's a faithful God. He's faithful. Hang in there. What did Jesus say when, when he spoke to the, Jericho, to the disciples? He said, stay in Jerusalem. What was Jesus trying to say to them? He said, stay in my presence. He said, go and mourn me and cry for me so that I can see how much you love me. Now that I'm gone, you know, when you lose somebody and you know that you're not going to see them again, at least with them, we know that Jesus is going to come back. Amen. But when is he going to come back? He wanted them. You know, you are used to Jesus leading you, being there. They missed him. But he says that I want you to continue to work. Save God. Wait for me in Jerusalem. The Holy Spirit is going to come upon you. They're like human beings, like you and me. The Holy Spirit is there to come upon them. We have got the Holy Spirit to guide us, to teach us, to lead us. It's not going to be easy, but we're going to prosper. Because God says, I alone know the plans that I have towards you. My plan is to prosper, you know, to harm you. God loves us that much. He says that through you, I'm going to make you famous. Through you, amen, you are going to prosper. You are going to prosper. Right now, you are gathering testimonies. I believe that when Abraham was moving from one place to the other, he didn't know that today we're going to be reading about him. We're going to be speaking about him and being encouraged. The Bible says the people that are written there in the Bible, they are written so that we can learn. I love you. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.